Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome for our first session on SiteScan for Archis. And uh, SiteScan is the end to end cloud based drone mapping solution for Nasri. And today, for this session, there is myself. I'm an account manager uh, here at Esri Ireland. And together with me, there is my colleague Aaron. He is the technical consultant. And um, I hope Aaron is here. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Perfect. So, so yeah, so I will turn off my cameras just so that you can see the full screen first and then we can get started. So before we start, we wanted to share our agenda for today's session. Uh, we'll explain the differences between the two ArcGIS drone solutions, what is SiteScan and the different data outputs that you can have with SiteScan. Aaron will then share an overview on SiteScan workflow and demonstrate um, the solutions around that. And after that, I will share more about the applicable industries, the benefits in licensing. And then at the very end, we are going to answer your questions. So if you have any question, please uh, drop here in the question box. And uh, also, we have a survey after the webinar. So if you can give your feedback, it would be very helpful for us. So probably you have heard about drone to map and uh, you might be wondering what is the difference between drone to map and site scan. So drone to map is a desktop based drone imagery processing. So you can use it to publish it on ArcGIS Online and Enterprise. And because it's a desktop uh, based product, you can also process drone imagery offline. And then site scan is a cloud based solution. It supports you to manage your drone fleet process uh, and manage unlimited data on the cloud, as well as visualize, analyze, share, and collaborate. So our focus for today's webinar is basically site scan. So why we say that site scan is an end-to-end -end solution? Basically, it covers the entire workflow. So it starts from supporting you to plan autonomous uh, drone flights in 3D and manage your data in the field as well as upload it to the cloud so you can process, analyze a limited amount of drone flight and data. From that, you can then perform drone analytics, which includes like measuring distances, surface areas, volumetrics, conducting temporal analysis, and generating cut and fill maps. Uh, and from that, you can quickly share drone and project data with common file formats, as well as ArcGIS Online or Enterprise, or you can even have unlimited uh, read-only users in SiteScan Manager for ArcGIS, or if you have Autodesk BIM 360, you can share content and report uh, issues within that as well. So um, SiteScan for ArcGIS delivers accurate 2D, 2.5D, and 3D data outputs to meet your diverse uh, needs that you might have in your team. So these outputs include auto mosaics, digital elevation models, 3D uh, point clouds, and meshes as well. So as well as oriented oblique imagery, thermal auto mosaics, and hybrid solution 360 panoramic photos. So for this uh, webinar, Aaron will be showing some examples on auto mosaics, digital elevation model, and 3D point clouds and meshes. So right now, Aaron will start uh, to demonstrate the, the entire end-to-end -end workflow. So over to you, Aaron. Thanks, Natalia. <clears throat> so now that we have a better understanding of what SiteScan is, I would like to take a closer look at the end-to-end -end workflow that Natalia has just touched on. So this workflow can be broken down into three stages. First, we have the plan and capture stage, which is performed using the SiteScan flight app. Using this app, users can quickly plan and create flight plans that are relevant to them. Next is a process, manage, and analyze stage where the images are processed in the cloud and data outputs are generated. When the processing is complete, users can analyze their images using a number of tools within the SiteScan Manager web app. Finally, we have the disseminate and collaborate stage when you need to generate up outputs for advanced analysis or for workflows that can't be done in the SiteScan browser. 
SiteScan has a direct link to ArcGIS Online, which allows us to utilize other project, products such as field applications, dashboards, web apps, and so on. Additionally, we have an Autodesk workflow where you can publish directly to your BIM 360 cloud from SiteScan or use the Autodesk um, connectors through ArcGIS. So what is the SiteScan flight app? <clears throat> it is a cloud-connected iPad app that allows project teams and drone operators to easily plan and execute autonomous drone mapping flights. Any flight that is completed automatic is automatically recorded in the cloud, which is important for any organization looking to scale a drone program and maintain accurate records of their operation. Users can monitor their fleets and create custom um, safety checklists before taking off. These responses are automatically saved to the cloud alongside other fleet management information. The iPad connects directly to the most commonly used drones and sends flight plans to the drone's autopilot for execution. After a flight is completed, images are transferred over to the iPad and uploaded via mobile or Wi-Fi connection. So now I would like to show you all a quick demo of the SiteScan flight app in action. Uh, as I don't have a, access to a drone myself, I will be using a general example which uses the flight app to capture imagery of a dam. So we will start by using the area survey flight mode so that we can easily trace out the boundary of the area we're interested in. After this, we will enable the terrain follow option which allows us to capture images at the various altitudes. Here you can see the different terrain heights at the top of the screen. Each pilot can preview their flight plan in 3D and is provided with an estimated flight time, resolution, and number of batteries required to complete the mission. This is based on the drone used and is shown at the bottom of the screen. The flight plan can then be saved for future use or for a different pilot to go to the field and execute it. You may also have the option of downloading offline base maps on your tablet. This is particularly useful if the flight will be conducted in an area with little to no coverage. Once you're on site and connected to the drone, you're then able to retrieve the safe flight plan from earlier. After performing a final review of the flight plan, the pilot will be prompted to complete the customized pre-flight checklist and record specific information, such as the name of the observer. A safety briefing is then provided, and after the pilot has re reviewed it, the app will perform automated system checks on the drone before allowing it to take off. The flight is completely automatic, which allows the pilot to monitor their drone's live video feed or visualize, pro visualize progress on a 2D or 3D map. So once the mission is complete, the drone will return to the operator's location on its own. So these images are then transferred to the iPad, either wireless, wirelessly or via SD card reader, and are viewed for proper quality and coverage. Once reviewed, the images can then be uploaded to the SiteScan Manager Cloud for automatic processing. So now that we have completed our data capture, we can move on to the next step in this end-to-end -end progress process, which is processing, managing, and analyzing the drone data in the SiteScan Manager web application. So the SiteScan Manager gives the user complete control and provides easy access for project teams to visualize and analyze their data. In this web app, the user can not only view the data, but can also perform some analytics. Measurements in both 2D and 3D, volumetrics, PDF inspection reports, or reviews of change over time are some of the tools that are available in SiteScan Manager. SiteScan includes unlimited data processing and storage of your drone data, and we also offer cloud hosting in the European Union, which is conveniently located in Dublin. So now I'd like to take, take you through some of the capabilities of SiteScan Manager. And we will now shift our focus to a more local example, showing a quarry in County Ross Common provided to us by quarry consultants. So this is the SiteScan Manager homepage. On the top left, you will see a number of icons, which include a projects tab, where you can see all the projects created within your organization, a team members tab, showing all members within your organization, 
a fleet management tab showing information on flights, pilots, aircraft and batteries, and a settings tab to monitor your organization settings. Projects are also shown as points on the map when added. In this instance, we have already created our project, so I'm going to navigate to our project example. Once you navigate to the project screen, you will see a number of options on the left-hand side, including information on missions, flight plans, ground control points, and so on. You also have the option to invite co-workers to your project, and you can do this by selecting Add New Members. So in this instance, if I wanted to add myself and Eamon to this project, uh, I can go ahead and do this. Um, you also have the ability to export imagery directly from the projects window. When we open our project, we can investigate our drone imagery in more detail. On the top left are a number of 2D and 3D views and analysis tools. Towards the bottom left, we have our processing, exporting and sharing tools. And to the top right, we have our map navigation and measurement tools. First, we might want to look at our ground control points. And here, um, we can analyze them if we need to. We can also see our individually captured images under the Photos tab. In this case, we might want to look at the Quarry Lake image. Here we have the option to download, or we can investigate it further. Under the Elevation tab, we have four separate tools. But first, we would need to decide if we want to use a DTM or DSM. We can then set contours using the automatic sliders for both the minor and major intervals. Or we can input these manually. Uh, we can also change the color of our contours if needed. We can create a digital elevation model easily by set setting an elevation range. The higher and lower, ins lower ranges in this instance have been changed, which is reflected in our elevation model. There is also a predefined color palette to choose from, including turbo, inferno, and grays. And then we can change the opacity of the model if needed. One of the more interesting elevation options is this cut and fill tool. In this analysis, an elevation raster is sliced horizontally using a plane of consistent elevation. All depressions below this line are considered fill measurements and all elevated areas above this line are considered cut measurements. We can use automatic sliders to change our range in the same way we did with our elevation model. If needed, we can also add additional cut and fill values or add a grid. The last of the elevation tools is Hillshade, which creates a Hillshade model based on the sun's altitude and the sun's direction. We can also add some depth to our Hillshade model using our exaggeration slider. So SiteScan includes the ability to share your elevation views. In this instance, we want to share our cut and fill analysis. So to do this, we just click on the share button and cut and paste our link. We can see via our share link that there are limited capabilities to view only cut and fill and some measure and overlay options. To add an overlay for more context, we can use the file tab. Measurements can be made on our quarry using the measurement tools within SiteScan. All measurement tools are located on the top right hand side of the screen. 
and include a, a line measurement tool, a volume measurement tool, counter tools, and a photo inspection tool. All me measurements are saved as annotations. In this case, we might want to use the volume tool to measure stockpiles at our quarry site. With the volume measurement, we can see the cut, fill, volume, and area of our specified feature. If we select our measurement on the map, we can also generate a report, or we can view in 3D. The 3D volume viewer is one of the most eye-catching aspects of SiteScan. This viewer gives us the ability to closely investigate the makeup of our selected feature. Here we will use our level plane as a comparison surface. And if we select the mesh option, we can add a smoother surface to our feature. Back to our 2D view, where we can use the line tool to measure the distance between two quarry lakes. Here we can see the measurement is around 85 meters. And we can also use our counter tool to measure location and elevation at a specific point. If we had another more recent scan of our quarry, we could use the timeline tool to draw before and after comparisons. All you would need to do is select each of our scans using the drop downs and use a comparison slider. Moving into 3D options, we can visualize our quarry as a point cloud. And in this view, we can set the size and the frequency of our points. Much like the 2D view, we can annotate our 3D point, point, point cloud with measurements. Let's look at this quarry lake and measure its area. Here we can see the to its total area in meters squared and the distances between each point. We can also use the distance tool to measure from the top to the bottom. The profile tool gives us an elevation profile of our quarry lake. As we navigate across, we can see the X, Y, and Z values of our profile. So finally, we have our 3D mesh view. This view gives us the freedom to navigate our quarry site closely. In this instance, we can see that our 3D mesh is sitting on top of our 2D base map. We can export this directly to our computer. Um, but in this case, in this instance, we are going to use this mesh in the next stage of our end-to-end -end workflow to create a web app. So we will need to share online, dark GIS online. Using the share button at the bottom left of the screen, all we have to do is sign into our ArcGIS online account and we can export our imagery in the various file types. As you can see, I am now linked up. I am now directly linked up to my ArcGIS online account. So we can download as a DSM, a point cloud as we've seen earlier, or an integrated integrated mesh for our web app. So now we're going to bring up a quick poll question. Uh, this is really just to get an idea on which of these tools you think would be most beneficial to your organizations. So I think Natalia is going to launch that now on our end. Yeah, thanks, Aaron. So I'm going to launch now the question. So which of the site scan tools would be most useful for you? We want to hear from you just so that we can perhaps organize another webinar more focused on certain tools. Let's see. We still, we're still getting some answers there. 
Um, let's see, sixty-six percent voted. Gonna close now. Let's see, seventy percent of the audience voted. So most of the people here interesting um, prefer like uh, the three D viewing options, point cloud, and integrated mesh. So yeah, Aaron, perhaps we can organize another webinar. <laughs> yeah. Over to Aaron. Cheers, Natalia. So now let's look at the final step of our drone data workflow using ArcGIS Online to disseminate and collaborate. Users have the option to download the outputs for local use without using ArcGIS Online, but you can also conduct advanced analysis of your data by leveraging the ArcGIS Pro platform. In the ArcGIS Pro desktop application, for example, where you can use our AI object detection tools or perform video analysis or through custom web apps and dashboards, as we will demonstrate in the next demo. We can also use Esri suites of field applications or in your Autodesk environment through the Esri Autodesk connector. It's easy to download these files locally to your computer or publish the data sets directly to ArcGIS Online or your enterprise portal. Looking now at the last step in the process, I would like to show you a few examples of sharing your drone imagery online. In this instance, I will show you a simple job status dashboard that was created using some of our site scan data. I will also show how our 3D mesh can be used to create an interactive web application. So I have now moved over to the home page of my ArcGIS online account. At the top right of the screen, there's a waffle bar showing the different ArcGIS products that are available to me. In this example, we will be using dashboards and instant apps to visualize our drone data, but we also have the option of using GeoBIM to integrate with BIM data, story maps for a text-based solution, or field applications like Survey123 to capture information. So let's navigate to the Quarry dashboard. So this is our Quarry job dashboard that I have created using our drone imagery. On the right-hand side, we have indicators to monitor the status of our live quarry jobs. This data is updated if and when a job is started, ongoing, or completed. To the bottom, we have a pie chart showing priority levels. And to the left, we have a few filters that we can use to display jobs by status and priority on the map. We can select any job with a high priority, and we can see its status. If we select a job and zoom in, we can look in more detail and get information on what is required. So here we can see this area requires a health and safety check. We can also select jobs that haven't started and see their priority level. If I select high on that pie chart, we can see the safe health and safety check that we just looked at. And if I select medium, we can see any medium priority jobs and investigate. In this instance, the machinery requires a service. We can also link surveys to these pop-ups to make them even more interactive. Now let's take a closer look at our quarry web, web app that was created using our 3D mesh. As we navigate, we can inspect specific areas of our quarry site. We can also see that our 3D mesh um, sits on top of our 2D base map as before. Um, to the top right, we've added some tools to this web application, such as the daylight tool, which mimics the sun height and direction on any given day. If we select our date and use the automatic slider, we will see the change in light in our model. For even more detail, we can select shadowing. This option is particularly useful for any, analyzing how new building developments can impact surroundings. We can also use a simple slide tool to pick, mark areas of interest for further inspection. In this case, we might use a measurement tool to calculate the lake as we did earlier. So with that, I will hand back over to Natalia, who will now have a look at the applicable industries and benefits of SiteScan. Many thanks, Aaron. So, so yeah, we selected a few industries thinking on Ireland first. So there are many applicable industries actually, and for Ireland, we believe, and 
just a second. It's still need to have, yeah. yeah. So the first industry is government. So land planning, parcel mapping, facility management, infrastructure management, asset inspection. It's all um, it's useful if you have site scan or any other drone solution. And it also can be used for mining. So it can be used for like site survey, area terrain models of the inventory, inventory management, planning and application as well. And for the AC industry, it can be used to monitor work sites, uh, topological mapping surveys, and also as Aaron just uh, showed for the shadow analysis, you can understand how the building is interacting with the environment and impacting. And the surroundings and also it can be used for offshore uh, for asset inspection measurement and observation of uh, inaccessible or dangerous area detection of erosion and corrosion or even examination of any abnormalities as well so considering the, the tools that are shared to the industries so we believe there are basically like six benefits for site scan. So the first one is uh, it helps you to reduce drone capture time because with the automated flights, you can really like uh, save uh, a lot of time. You can do the fly hectares within minutes. Uh, second one is improve data accuracy. So by using high resolution sensor points on the ground, you can really achieve up to quarter inch horizontal or half inch vertical data accuracy. Third one is it helps you to reduce costs by leveraging unlimited processing storage on the cloud. So this let, lets you scale the, the drone processing and flight planning. So without really needing to, to invest in any uh, storage uh, solution. And uh, also it lets you to maintain historical data to help you to monitor the entire project cycle, which as a consequence help you to save costs. And uh, it gives also smart analytics insights um, by allowing you to, to track your drone fleets, generate reports, like special 3D reports, and use a single source of record for of your, all your drone data. Uh, I skipped there actually. Uh, to, it also helps you to improve safety productivity by automating flights and inspections and dangerous on hard uh, to reach areas. And finally, you can collaborate easily with others in your organization by sharing data to Arctis Online and uh, Arctis Enterprise. So the turnaround time to share data capture from the flight is usually less than 12 hours. So this quickly helps you to, to speed up your support and uh, fix the decision more uh, quicker. So the licensing for SiteScan, it's per name to user, which is quite similar to ArcGIS Online. So basically you have these two uh, licenses types, the operator license and the access license. The operator license is required if you to, to pilot the drone flights and also to upload the flight images to the cloud. So you always need at least one operator license. And then if you need to upload, download, edit, or analyze um, the project as well, uh, then you might need another license, then it can be an access license. And very similar to the uh, online as well, it also gives you the different user roles. So you have the admin, full access, and view only. So these roles, they are the standard ones, but you can also have a more tailored role if you need. So if the admin uh, admin role type, you can assign and manage member accounts, user roles, projects, and data access privileges. Admin can have either an access license or an operator license. And the full access uh, use, the users can upload, download, edit, analyze, and process data within projects. They have as being assigned as well. So in the same way, it can be uh, either an access license or an operator license to have the full access uh, role. And then you have also the view only. So this uh, privilege is basically, it's, it's free, so it's unlimited, so you can add, add as many viewers as you want. And um, yeah, so, so all the measurements actually taken by the viewers they are not saved, so that's one thing to take into account. If you if you want to save those measurements, you need to have the full access license. 
So now we are going to go for the questions. Um, I will turn on my, back my camera. Aaron can turn off his camera as well. We're going to check here if there is any question on the, on the box. So Aaron, do you want to start with the questions? Yeah, I think I have one here. Um, it's just popped up. Does the unlimited storage carry over from SiteScan to ArcGIS Online? Um, so the storage is unlimited on SiteScan, but if you share the content on ArcGIS Online, then it will take up credits, uh, just depending on the size of the data. So if it is unlimited in SiteScan, but whenever you bring it across to ArcGIS Online, um, there is a credit usage involved. Uh, so just bear that in mind. Okay, very good. And then I see one question that is quite related to that. So how much data can I cross in ArcGIS uh, with SiteScan and how much data can I store with ArcGIS credits be consumed? So so yeah, completing this, this question, it's a uh, SiteScan, it's, uh, it allows you to have unlimited processing and run data storage. So the credits are actually consumed in ArcGIS Online, so SiteScan will not consume any credits for any storage you have there. Yeah. Thanks, Natalia. And then there's another one here. Uh, what types of imagery can I process as SiteScan Manager? So images must be geotagged JPEG files, I believe. Um, you can process thermal and multispectral imagery. Video cannot be processed maps and um, in the maps and models, but you can be used in conjunction with like the geospatial video logs recorded on the flight plan um, app. Uh, so yeah, that would be the answer to what types of imagery you can use. Yeah, I see. I see another question here. Uh, is the flight app compatible with Android or is only iOS? I believe it's both, right, Aaron? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Sorry. What was it? The if the the flight app is it compatible with uh, only iOS I think or it's, Android? I think it's only. I think it's only iOS. Um, All right. Yeah. Yeah. At the moment. Yeah. Okay. So, so how long does it take to process data is another question here. So it really depends on the, the amount of the, the imagery that you have. So it usually takes about one hour between like 150 and 200 images. So you can make the calculations from that. Yeah. Um, another one here. Can you process images on SiteScan Manager? Uh, yeah, you can process images from your computer. Um, in the SiteScan Manager. Uh, to do this, you'd need to create like a new project uh, and select a new mission button um, where you can process your images in your in your project view. So you can do it from the project view as well. It doesn't have to be just straight from your from your drone um, straight over to the manager. So yeah. Very good. So so there is another question asking about what are the drones that uh, are supported with SiteScan flight planning. So it's <laughs> The, the list is quite long. Um, <laughs> I, I know like for the, there are many DJI uh, drones that are compatible, but uh, I believe there are other drones nowadays as well. Uh, we can share that uh, document with you later, like with the entire list of drones. Mm -hmm. um, still a few more. So where do you, we input the pre-flight and post-flight checklist? Um, so this will be in the SiteScan Manager app under the organization settings icon. Um, so there you can select like a new checklist to all projects and like make it your default checklist. But you can also input the check uh, checklist on at a per project level. So if you were doing it per project, and um, you can add them in the project view as well. So just depending on your use case then. And then there's one more I think here. Um, how accurate are the data outputs? Um, I think using the dry ground control points, it's around one centimeter to 0 0.1 or two inches, I think, um, or better, can be achieved vertically, and that's vertically and horizontally. But I think there's an accuracy feature called checkpoint, which you can use, um, sort of to help you see how accurate it is. Um, yeah, can you I have a post flight? One. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, no, you can go ahead with the, the, the question. Can you have a post-flight checklist? Yeah, you can. You can have both a pre-flight and post-flight checklist. Yeah, I, I see one question here. Uh, how many images can sites can process at one time? 
so it sort of goes along with the previous answer that it's it takes like 150 200 images it takes one hour so mm -hmm. yeah. um, i'm not seeing any more on, yeah, on my no. end, can you um, so if anybody yeah, has quite, any more it's quite involved there are so yeah but uh I think we answered most of the questions, but we will get back to you. If we didn't answer today, um, we have your, your questions here and your name, and then we can send an email back to you well, answering your question, or you can also drop an email to myself and Aaron, and mm -hmm. uh, we can also arrange maybe a more in-depth demo. If, if there is any tool here you'd like to see more details, you're more than happy to, to arrange a demo. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Awesome. So thanks a lot, Aaron, for, for yeah. all the uh, demonstration. And I hope to, to organize another webinar soon. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Thanks very much.